Well, hello there, Jackie Holland here in Sherman, Texas. I'm with Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries, a ministry to hurting men and women from the jailhouse to the penthouse. This is the month that I'm um, celebrating my 35 years in full-time outreach ministry. So, uh, hurrah, hurrah, <laughs> I'm hung in there and uh, enjoyed enjoyed the journey and uh, pl have no plans to quit unless the good Lord takes me home. And of course, he always has the final decision on everything, doesn't he? So I hope you're doing well. I hope the Lord is blessing you real good and there's much, um, much joy in your life. I hope, I hope, I hope. And uh, I know that there's a lot of struggles and trials in life. It comes to go and it rains, falls on the just and the unjust and there's good times and hard times and it just happens and there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Today, I picked up this little book and it's called Goals and it was uh, sent out by the Dr. Mike Murdoch. I had become a partner with their uh, Jerusalem radio and uh, getting the mess gospel out in Jerusalem. And so uh, I, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem the Psalms 122.6 says, if you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you will prosper, you know, and uh, grace and peace be unto all of those who love and his people and love that that land, that beautiful land. And uh, But anyway, this book's called Goals, and I was reading it, and I thought, well, I think I'm going to just read this right quick because I think this is going to encourage you. And again, I didn't write these. It's Goals, and it's Dr. Mike Murdoch. But, uh, you know, he has many wisdom keys and is just a, a great, uh, great teacher. It says, when your heart decides the destination, your mind will design the map to reach it. Now, it's got, it's, you need to think about it a minute. When your heart decides the destination, then your mind will design the map to reach it. And so a lot of times you say, well, I don't know where I'm going because you have no goals. So we need goals. We need we need visions. We we need the Lord to ask us, give us creative pictures and and uh, and show us the way to go. We well, can pray that way. Lord, in all, and he said in all your ways, if you'll acknowledge him, he will direct your steps. So you set your heart and then your mind will come in line and you will go in the direction that you desire to go. The clearer your goals, the greater your faith. So if everything is all vague and foggy, you're not going to you're not going to get it. You're thinking, oh, I don't know, but how? But because you think the devil's not going to always be throwing <laughs> signs up saying, oops, but you forgot about this, you forgot about this, you forgot about this, and you have to say, wait, 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 wait. I can't, I can only do one thing at a time. I can't clear the road and, you know, pack the bag at the same time. So you can do one thing at a time and you ask the Lord to show you. So the clearer the goals, the greater your faith. Your focus decides your feelings. If you're going to focus on negative, then you're going to feel negative. If you say, woe is me, I, you know, I don't know why I'm being treated badly, that's... It, that, that's what your picture is going to look like. It's the way your feelings are going to feel like. And so you have to wait and say, you know what? Sometimes it has to go like this. You know, yeah, Lord, the truth is that person or those people may have meant something that hurt you for evil. They had evil intent. Really, wasn't good, wasn't for your best interest for sure. But guess what? The Lord can turn those things around for good. That's why we need to be focused on the, the, the things that, he's, that he wants us to focus on. And he said, think on things that are good, true, pure, and lovely. Your focus decides your feelings. An uncommon dream will require an uncommon mentor. So you, need, you, you don't need to just randomly keep everything to yourself and say, I, I can figure this out, I can figure this out. You need God. And you also need other people. It's, it's why, why stories are so important. That's why the, the Bible is filled with stories and, uh, and, and struggles that people have gone through. You need mentors. You need people that are knowledgeable in certain matters, whether it be law or uh, real estate or purchasing or you know, loans or anything else. I mean, you need, 
you need an uncommon mentor, but you need somebody you can trust. So that's pretty uncommon. I hate to say it, but it's like, it's kind of uncommon. So you find somebody you can trust that has integrity. And uh, you, the, the, if you pray, the Lord will show you. Your success is decided by what you're willing to ignore. Yeah, I see that, don't you? Your success will be decided by what you're willing to ignore because if you let those petty things get in your way, those things are going to get so big that that's all you're going to see. You're not going to see your future. You're not going to see your desired outcome, but you're going to see doubt, fear, and unbelief. So you can't you can't think on that. You got to think on things that are good, true, pure, and lovely. Anything that keeps your attention has become your master. So if you're just thinking, oh, I can't believe they didn't smile. I can't believe they didn't talk. I can't believe they didn't give. I can't believe they didn't do. I can't believe that they didn't speak. Whatever. Just, you can't just do that or that they hurt me. Well, you just got to let it go as best you can. And you give it to God. That's the best way to let something go. You give it to God. All men fall, but the great ones get back up. That's a great quote, isn't it? All men fall, but the great ones get back up. And when you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Again, this is taken from a little book, Goals, by Dr. Mike Murdoch. And it's just treasure, treasures of uh, wisdom. One hour in the presence of God will, will reveal the flaws of your most carefully laid plans. So when you get before the Lord and you begin to seek Him, He's seeking with your whole heart. He said, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. And He will show you the way you need to go. God will direct you. He's going to direct you if you will seek Him. When you get involved with God's dream, He will get involved with your dream. In other words, put the first the kingdom of God first. And then all these other things will come into line. If you get if you get your priorities out of line and, and out of order, then you're going to be frustrated and you're going to you know, complicate your whole purpose and your whole uh, focus. Your focus will be broken. That's just the bottom line. You you've got to you've got to put God first. Something in your hand can create anything you want in your future. So. Um, I've heard him say, what, if what you have in your hand is not what you need, then make it a seed. So give to somebody else. Bless somebody else. Help somebody else. You know, I wish if it were the Lord's will, I, I, would, I, I would love so much if I had enough money that I could make it, that I could give everything away in the store instead of selling it. But sometimes people need to buy things. And... Uh, and we need to trust the Lord. And our, and we get stretched, stretch, stretch, stretch. Each act of obedience shortens the distance to any miracle you're pursuing. Each act of obedience shortens the distance to any miracle you're pursuing. Your goals choose your mentors. Your goals will choose who you're going to uh, seek out. Because if you're wanting to know something about uh, buying a house you're not going to go to a plum, plumber necessarily you, you you're going to want to know what the plumbing's like but he's not going to know how to do the paperwork on 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 the house house sale stress diminishes your joy never discuss your problem with someone incapable of solving it if i have oh i've got so many issues i know that i start to say if i have a problem of course i've got many Many negatives, most of us do. But we want to talk about it. Women are bad about it. We want to talk about it. We want to talk through the matter. Don't, just, just bite your lip. Don't do it. They don't really want to hear it. And if they do, then they'll go tell it. And then you'll be mad at yourself because you did. And it's not worth it, trust me. When fatigue walks in, faith walks out. So when you're tired, and you sometimes you just need to rest. I mean, really rest. You just need to just break away from whatever it is you're doing if at all possible if at all possible and just breathe <laughs> take a breath just don't don't be worried don't worry remember that little song don't worry be happy I always like that song a tired mind rarely makes good decisions a tired mind rarely makes good decisions an uncommon dream requires uncommon patience and this is how the little book that Dr. Mike Murdoch has, it's gold. So I, this is not st stuff that I've thought up, but it was very excellent. And I thought, you know what, you need to hear this today. 
uh, it came to me as a gift from uh, because I had given uh, my donation and become a partner with the Jerusalem Project, and uh, and he sent this little book, and I just love it. An uncommon assignment attracts an uncommon adversary. An uncommon assignment attracts an uncommon adversary. Huh? Yeah, that stands to reason. You're going to do something. You're going to do something big. You're going to do. You, you've got something. You're. You, you know, you really need to stay stay focused on and you need to do it right. Well, there's going to be something that's going to bombard you if you're not careful. So stay on top of that. Champions are willing to do things they hate to create something else that they love. Losers focus on what they're going through. Champions focus on what they're going to. Oh, my goodness. That struck a chord. I'm going to read that again. I don't want to be a loser to you. I don't want to be a loser. I don't, I, I don't like to be called a loser. I don't want to think I'm a loser. I don't want to be a loser. Losers focus on what they're going through. Champions focus on what they are going to. I'm a champion, are you? So you have to have your goals right. Diligence is immediate attention to an assigned task. Failure is not an event, but merely an opinion. That's true. Somebody may see some accomplishments you just did and think, well, that, that didn't amount to much. That was really nothing. And yet, it could be groundbreaking. Fame will birth pursuit. Pursuit will birth demands. Demands will birth distractions. Distractions will birth failure. Distractions are not good. Now, the Lord wants us to look to Him, the author and the finisher of our faith, he doesn't want us to fail. That's not a, about who God is. He won't, he, he really, some people say, I don't think God cares whether you succeed or not. Oh, really? He said, I, you know, I want you to succeed, be in health. And, and even as your soul prospers, I want you to prosper. The only reason men fail is they have, they break their focus. Something you already have can create everything else that you ever want. Something you have, you would have. Like basically, what do you have in your hand? Moses said, I just have a rod. Well, pick it up, take it. Then God will turn it into what he wants. The problem you're willing to solve determines who pursues you. Focus creates blindness. Information births confidence. Struggle is the proof that you have not yet been conquered. <laughs> oh boy. Struggle is the proof that you have not yet been conquered. That's the truth. You're still fighting. You say, no, I'm not giving up. No, and don't. Don't give up. Don't give up. Like, when was it Winston Churchill? He said, never give up. <laughs> the problems you solve determine the rewards that you're going to receive in life. You know, everybody's not going to celebrate you. Someone said to me a lot early on in ministry, they said, don't get, don't get upset when people don't get excited about your baby. Well, I knew what they meant. I found it out too along the way. Most people don't get excited by what you're doing. There's a few that want to jump on board and help you, and that's a they're called partners and they're probably, they're, they're armor bearers. They're they're a blessing. They're friends. They genuinely care. But there are some that literally will be the roadblocks that try to block you from going forward. Ah, the goal of the enemy is to is to stain your self portrait. See, God wants you to see yourself as He sees you. And that is that you're not a loser, but you're a winner. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So make your future so big, yesterday will disappear. Don't be looking back. I know there's good things to look back for, and it's good to remember the those former things, but really to the former things are the former bad things you don't want to think about. And even your successes, it's like, you know what, yeah, I, I, I understand. But that is still, I mean, you can go ahead and, and have, you know, pictures and, and, and stuff like that. But the truth is, that's over. That's behind you. And that's sad, isn't it? It's unfortunate. But it's called a legacy a lot of times. Research increases self-confidence. So the more you know about a matter, the better you're going to feel and more confident you're going to be. Where there are, two, there are two ways to increase wisdom, mistakes and mentors. So you can get godly uh, or, or advice from an expert, or you can just say, I'm, you know, I, I don't need those directions in that, uh, in that box that came, put, putting that 
certain thing together, chunk, chunk it. I, I think this looks simple enough. And then you realize that that little tiny screw that you missed was important after all. Strife is the proof somebody does not belong. Mm -hmm. Strife is the proof that somebody doesn't belong. Those who ask the question determine the quality of every conversation. Hmm. When you can manage a day, you can manage your life. That's why the Lord says, choose this today who you'll serve. And also, he says, don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough sin today to be concerned about. So don't be worried about it. Don't be worried. Don't be worried, period. Nothing is ever as bad as it first appears. You know, sometimes things you say, I can't, oh, oh, no, no, no. I, I won't be able to deal with that. That thing is just too hard. And a lot of times after just settling down, let the dust settle a little bit. It's not, it's not so bad after all. And God gives you the grace. He will never allow you to go through more than you're able to deal with. <laughs> I know, it seems like you get to your limit and you get to the very edge of the cliff, but he's there, he's there. When you replay your past, you're, when you replay your past, you're, you poison your present. So don't be going, don't be dragging the past behind you. But go forward like a good soldier and keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. What you do daily determines what you become permanently. You have no right to anything you've not pursued. Your assignment will always have an adversary. There's always going to be an enemy coming against you. you should get ready. The first step towards the success is the willing to, to listen. Most most people aren't good listeners. I'm, I'm not all that good at it, so I need to ask God, and you do, probably do too. I, Lord, help me to. We have two ears <laughs> and one mouth, so we need to listen more than speak. Loss can be your first step toward change. Well, that's the truth. You know what? That is the that is the gospel truth. Loss. When something is taken away from you or you lose something that's dear to you, you just, you might as well write it on the chalkboard. Change is a coming. Nope. Mm -mm. Loss. Loss creates it to be the first step towards change. The battle of life is for your mind. The battle of your mind is for your focus. Your chosen focus is the world you have created, created for yourself. Your goals force every adversary to reveal their opposition to you. And that's just part of this book. This is a great book, Goals. You can get these. He, he sends these books out, and they just, they're just wonderful. What Wonderful things to make you stop and think. And I just feel like, well, I'm going to honor him because um, I, I, I worked for, for Dr. Murdoch for a year setting up a food ministry and a, a senior outreach, and that was a wonderful blessing. But I've known, I've known his ministry, and uh, I've been a mentor for many, many years, and friends, I'm friends with his uh, family, his sister, in, in particular, one of his younger sister, and, uh, but, you know, God is good, and he wants us to have goals, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to bless you with that, bless you with that, but you would go to his ministry, and it's, uh, uh the Wisdom Center, or, uh, Wisdom Center. Or MikeMurdochBooks.com. You could go there if you're interested in his book. He's really got wonderful books. But I just want to encourage you today. Don't give up on your dreams and goals. See, God has a wonderful plan for you. And it's it's he wants to give you a hope and a future. He's got a bright, a brighter tomorrow for you than your today. Now you say, well, what is that on your arms? Do you have, do I, do you have wraps around your arms? Yes, my darling. I'm an old lady in the natural. Well, to some, it's all relative. If I were sitting next to somebody that was 96, then I would be a young person because I'm 76. But my skin is thinner, and I was diagnosed with cancer, stage 4 cancer, over 8 years ago. And I'm very uh, sensitive thin skin. It's never been all that great, but it's really taken a toll. And about, it's been six months, I had a spider a brown recluse, I guess, bite me. It was trying to drill a hole through my hand. I've still got the uh, the knots here. It's still in there. It still sort of throbs every now and then. It's weakened my arm. But you know what? I can't let that 
a little tiny spider wreck my life, can I? No. So I do what I need to do. So I think this makes it feel better for a little bit, so I'll wrap my wrist. So, that, so, don't, so that's what that is. You say, well, goodness, don't you have the authority and the power to cause that to go away, to be healed? I, I pray over my hand every day. And I can tell you right now, I almost lost my finger. I almost lost my hand six months ago because of us. It, it was it turned into cellulitis, and then to MRSA, and uh, it's amazing. People have lost limbs because of insect bites. Can you believe that? Or snakes, or various things. So it's getting better, but it's still slow go. But I'm not going to let that stop me. I've got stuff to do. But I've got places to go, people to see, and uh, yeah, somebody's trying to. Somebody's trying to break my focus. No, I'm not, I, I'm, it's my responsibility not to allow that to happen. Somebody's trying to steal or, or toss away my dreams, but I'm not going to let that happen because, no, these are mine. Somebody doesn't care whether I make it, whether I live or die. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? That's really too bad because I'm going to do what God wants me to do until he says, that's it, curtains. <laughs> well, today, I hope you were blessed as I was reading this book on goals. And I would just suggest to you, this is Dr. Mike Murdoch's, it's not, that was not my uh, writing, it was his, but they're so, it's so excellent. We should always give honor to him as due. You know that, don't you? You quit, be, you quit holding back and trying to take credit for something that everybody is doing. Go ahead and give the credit give the credit away where it belongs. God will give you something fresh and new, or He will add to, and and bless you. It's going to enhance you. I can promise you that. So today, the Lord I know is speaking to some of you, and you're thinking, "My, I've got I've got thing things that I've got to do." And I don't know if I can get it done. I, I don't have the strength. No, neither do I. I do not have the strength to do what I need to do. When I look ahead and I know what I need to do, I do not, I'm not capable or able to do it. I am not financially able. I am, I, I need help. And I feel like people say, I love you, Jackie, I love you. But if I say I need help, they're like, da 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 dee dee, da 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 da. <laughs> you know why? Maybe they're not supposed to help. Maybe I'm supposed to continue trusting in the Lord. Have I made it 76 years without their help? Probably. <laughs> so why put yourself on a limb like that? Why put people in, in a place like that but say this? You know what? The Lord has never failed me yet. He's still working on me, and he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. It's been a slow, hot day in Sherman, but I'm thinking, and I'm praying, and I'm seeking the Lord, and I will ask on your behalf. So let's pray. You know, it's good to have wisdom. It's good to have, you need it. You need to pray for wisdom, spirit of wisdom or revelation and the knowledge of God. But really, the Bible says the fool says in his heart, there's no God. Did you know some of the people that are like so high in political places and in the world financial system, they deny God? Well, according to the Bible, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't write it, but I'm repeating it. It says the fool says in their heart, there is no God. I don't want to be a fool to you. Mm -mm. If I'm going to, I may look foolish. I may act foolish in people's eyes. But no, I believe in God. I believe there's one true and only living God. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I believe he's the first, the last. I believe that God created the heavens and earth. God. One God. Yeah. Yeshua, our Lord, Adonai, we, we love you, Lord, we love you, we need you, 
God sent his son into this world. Not to condemn the world, but the world through him to be saved. So God made a way of escape for us. And he wants you to go forward. But you cannot go forward if you're lost as this. And you, 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 you don't know. You know, it's an unstable man. You're unstable. If you don't know the Lord, you're not stable. You're, you're unstable. You're, you're like you're walking a tightrope. You're not stable. And you need to get your confidence in the Lord. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We need a Savior. And Jesus is the Savior, the blessed Savior. So let's say a prayer together. And, I'm, and ask Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins and uh, show you the way. Heavenly Father, I come to you now in Jesus' name. You can repeat it after me. I come to you now in Jesus' name. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse my heart of all ungodliness. I believe you are God. I believe you sent your son, Jesus, to pay for my sins on the cross. I believe he had came from heaven, a birth, virgin birth, lived a sinless life, experienced life and understands how we feel preached for three years, walking the earth, healing the sick, setting captives free, opening blinded eyes, raising the dead, shocking people, turning, turning people's lives upside down for good, and showing them the way. You know, John the Baptist had been preaching all about this Jesus and said, there's somebody coming after me that's not, I'm not worthy to untie his shoes. Well, neither are we. In our own, we're not worthy. But Jesus went to a cross one day. He did it willingly. The Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't. He went willingly for you and for me. He paid for our sins. So Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I give you my life now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and your power, and I will live for you. Show me the way in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. And again, my name is Jackie Holland, Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries. You can go to my website, whosoeverwill.tv, if you'd like to uh, leave a message or donate. would be wonderful. We're struggling. It's very hard. Something I love is, is trying to be taken from me. But that's just it's probably happening in your life as well. And again, that's the change. Change is coming. But God is bigger than any change or distractions in life. So if, he's, if He can keep you this far, He can He can keep you. So don't don't lose heart. Don't give up. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. And know this: the one who brought you, you will leave with Him. Remember that old song: Whoever brought you the dance, you be sure you leave with Him. Jesus brought you here. Before the foundation of the world, he knew you. He knew your name. 